The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. I'm filling in for Bill Phelan because he had to go back uh, to New York City. What Bill is trying to uh, present here is a collection of mixed designs of different projects here in North America using high-performance concrete. And his approach is to more talk about the mixed design, the control of the mixed design, the quality control, and the preparing of the projects and the, the quality control during the projects. So high-strength concrete uh, today is 10,000 PSI to 18,000 PSI at 56 days is in generally accompanied with a modulus of elasticity requirement by the engineers. I saw in your presentation that there was no requirement for uh, the modulus of elasticity, but I believe that in the project that Bill has been involved in New York City, there's always a uh, modulus of elasticity requirement. So for that, the coarse aggregate is the key element in achieving these uh, high modulus of elasticity. So the ACI 318 guideline for modulus of elasticity is 57,000 times the F prime C. 12,000 PSI, 56 days can be achieved anywhere in North America. The use of supplementary cementitious materials, fly, slag, fly ash, silica fume is essential. Their varying particle size helps definitively to improve the packing factor, packing density, which in the case of self-consolidating concrete, if it's going to be used during the construction, is definitively an important factor. So optimum bled requires some preliminary testing, and this is a very, very a proponent of these uh, preliminary testing. In general, SCMs will be 65% plus or minus of total cementitious contents. The SCC mix will have spread of 24 to 30 inches, and with a target of plus or minus 2 inches. Uh, I've uh, been uh, producing very successful placement at job site. The key requirement for the 12,000 PSI 56 days, good strength producing cement, Low water cement ratio, 0.3 or less, well graded combined aggregate, low water content, negative slump, water slump. So I always ask him how he gets to these numbers, but this is based on PCI requirement where they have a zero slump, and then if he cut, you cut the water down, he, he can calculate with these uh, negative water slump. I'm a lab person. I have a hard time understanding these negative slump, but this is how they talk in the field. So. Self-consolidating concrete to maximize the, self, uh, the cementitious efficiency and the use of slag, fly ash, and silica fume. And then excellent control by the concrete producers. So if your high-strength concrete project is the first in your area, which and this is a, an interesting comment here that he has, make sure you give enough time of preparing for the and testing for your mixed design. I was uh, just talking with somebody yesterday that uh, did a very high-performance self-consolidating concrete in the area, and they just went ahead and performed the, the pour. And when they demolded, they had the very bad surprises because they did no trial at all. They just went for it and tried and hoped for the best. So this is obviously not the way to go. Budgetous of elasticity is a, a controlling factor in tall slender towers. The proper coarse aggregates is a necessity and it is often has to be imported to obtain the right uh, results. Successful preliminary testing and mandatory to confirm that the uh, proposed mix design achieves 1.1 F5C plus 700 PSI for trial mixage with shrinkage below 0.04% at 28 days and a spread of 25 inch plus or minus 2 in diameter if you're going to be using self-consolidating concrete. There's going to be a presentation, I believe, on this project uh, this afternoon, I think in the next session. But uh, Bill actually likes to present this because there's uh, pictures of him at the top there or at the 111th floor. So this project had 166 floors pumped from the bottom. And uh, the use of uh, the proper equipment, put their high performance pump uh, from the ground up to up to 600 meters was used and uh, had the no problem pumping with the consistent flow. So here's a picture of Bill at the 111th floor, and he really likes to show these pictures. 
So here's the mixed design here for this uh, particular project. Had uh, 645 pounds of cement, 100 pounds of fly ash, silica fume, and then the fine and coarse aggregate here looks in about the 50 50 percent blend or in volume. And they achieved a slump flow of between 24 to 28 inch diameter. And compressive strength varied with around 80 MPA at 56 days. And on average, though, that was the required strength, but on average, they obtained. 13,000 PSI with an average uh, modulus of elasticity at 90 days of uh, 6.2 to 7.1. Here in North America, there's a few mixed designs here. The Tower One in New York City, 105 story mixed CAS. This afternoon, we'll be presenting an in detail survey of this project, the survey of this. But uh, here's the mixed design here, which obtained always the uh, final sum of 23 to 20. So this was an SCC mix that was used. Uh, for this and obtained a 4,000 PSI concrete or to 14,000 to 16,000 PSI. The Wachovia Tower here is 51 stories. The uh, Premier on Pine, another building here where you see these are not all SCC mixes. The last three mixes and the, were more like 8 to 11 inch slump. But the Wachovia Tower, because of the change in the mix design throughout the project, ended up turning into an SCC mix and, uh, with 25-inch diameter. I think I have the, some of these details coming up here. Bill's involvement with this Tower One uh, project is a big proponent of pre-concrete conference with a proper agenda and accurate minute. The concrete producer must provide a redosage chart for the high-range water reducer throughout the project in case of unexpected delays. And the viscosity modifying agent has to be on site because if there is to be a redosage of the admixtures, if there's any bleeding or segregating here, it can be rapidly corrected with the use of a small amount of VMA on the job site. Field testing must be done by ACI certified technician. And any time you're dealing with a more complicated mixed design, you obviously want to have a very qualified technician on the job site. The key tests are water content. Bill is very, very adamant about the use of microwave tests in accordance to the AASHTO test to control the amount of water in the mix. Uh, quality control of self-consolidating concrete is definitively impacted by the amount of water. And he likes to say that even if that microwave is not plugged, it still is a good instrument because it forces people, oh, when they see that on the job site, everybody knows they might be tested or evaluated, so they arrive on the job site with a, a very controlled mix. Air content is measured by air meter or unit weight. A key requirement for high strength concrete, owners select a, a testing laboratory to run their trial concrete mixes. The test should be run 90 days before the bid days. Several mixes have to be run. Often additional mixes have to be run to get satisfying mix. And of course, the same uh, requirement that you had at the beginning of the presentation. In most city, only one or two cement can be used to develop that type of strength. And of course, the aggregate is the same way like we mentioned earlier. Mass concrete with the New York Port Authority has uh, run some tests here where the ACI 301 requirement is 158 degree Fahrenheit maximum temperature, that's 70 degrees Celsius, with a delta of 35 degree F. What they have obtained there is a, and high temperature results in significant straight loss. I think if you go higher than 158 at 130 degree Fahrenheit, the concrete has resulted in 30 percent loss in compressive strength. Well, when they went to a, at about 162 to 165 degree Fahrenheit, they only lost 9%, which is something that you can live with, but they've done the test to verify these numbers and, uh, for New York City, and it seemed to have been in good correlation. All the bidders bid the same mix. They don't have to add additional cementitious materials since the mix are known. Successful test placement are mandatory to assure the proper workability, pumpability, and finish. Again, the little comment about the 166th floor and the Burj Khalifa SCC mix. So the Wachovia Corporate Center, structural engineer Thomas A. Good, 52-story. There's a picture of the tower here. The original mix design required 16,000 PSI at 56 days, but 18,000 PSI mix was required to maintain the column size due to a design change in the upper floors. So that's the mix that went from a requirement of 8 to 10-inch slump 
and it became an SCC mix with an average spread of a 25-inch diameter. So here's a few pictures here of the job site and the mix design here. So we have 700 pounds of cement, 225 pounds of uh, fly ash and silica fume, fine ag, coarse ag, water to cement ratio 0.23, and an average of 21,000 PSI was obtained at 56 days. The premier on pine in Seattle, here's a few pictures, the heavy reinforcement, and pictures during the project, and uh, here's the mixed design. So again, a lot of cementitious in here, 775 pounds, 110 of fly ash, slag, silica fume, fine and coarse aggregate. This one here had a 10-inch final slump, and uh, on average, 17,000 PSI was obtained at 56 days. And then the project, the Grove at Grand Bay, Miami, Florida, this one is 20-story high. And it was an interesting project because the two towers that are going to be twisting to offer the nice, uh, to two sides of the building, a view on the bay. And it is going to be the first LEED Gold Certified Residential Building in Miami when it's completed. So here's the pictures of it. So, and then here the mix design, he wasn't able to obtain the detail other than knowing that there's a slag silica fume in there. And the water to cement ratio is 0.24. I think that they didn't want to share the mix design on this one here. And the compressive strength, we know that it's 12,000 PSI as a requirement. So the QAQC requirement is very important to reflect the proper monitoring the field testing. Water content, he likes the microwave test. And they can make sure that you control the unit weight, that you don't have any air entrainment if you don't want it or vice versa. Compressive strength. Obviously, when you do high-performance concrete testing, you don't want to use capping. It needs to be grinded cylinders. But you have to remind that because sometimes some labs don't know that. Next, make sure that the lab that is selected is uh, familiar with the testing high-performance concrete. Pre-concrete meeting, again, you never emphasize that enough. Monthly chart may be required for water to make ratio, compressive strength, and slump flow range. So he likes to say, trust people, but verify. And he emphasizes his quality control with his microwave test definitively. Thank you.